Hi friends, welcome to Shampat. I am Amrit Pandey and today I am going to teach you Animals and their surroundings lecture 2 and uh, in my last video I have told you all that I will make a discussing video and uh, now let's begin the discuss. Sorry my marker has fallen down. So let's start with adaptations. <laughs> In this video, I'm again defining adaptations. Adaptations are the special features which are developed by any living organisms to survive in their own habitat. Now let's come to body coverings. Snail has a body covering like, named shell. Shell is not so hard, but it's soft. Fish. Fish has scales on its body which run from which run from forward to backward means from front to back in a fish body fish's body. Crocodile it also has scales. Polar bear fur. So uh, the, uh, now I'm going to tell you that how do polar bears have made this adaptation of fur in the polar regions? So one, uh, many years ago. There was a time when polar bears, uh, polar bears felt cold and they died due to the means chill. So they realized that as the as their fur grow, they realized that they are means the chill is not means is not. What do I say? If I say it, wait. I'm telling you once again. The uh, so it was protecting them. In other language, it was protecting them from cold so like this this adaptation was developed in the polar bear's body so now let's come to arctic fox arctic fox is also fur bird feathers the feathers only do not help the birds to fly but also the hollow bones and bones in the tail tail plays a very important role in a bird's body because it helps it because it helps the birds to change the direction of their bo of their body while they fly. Now let's come to tortoise. Tortoise is a shell but it's hard and rough. It is not like a snail. Porcupine. It has bent spines on its body. An oyster shell. Oyster is the name of a mushroom, but it but this living organism looks like an oyster mushroom. That's why its name is kept oyster. Its body covering is also a shell. Now let's come to plates. An armadillo has a has hard armor like plates, which protect it from its enemies. Wool. Some animals such as sheep have wool means the body covering of the the body covering is wool wool so this wool keeps them warm like a fur now let's come to a topic camouflage c a m o u f l a g e camouflage some animals have special features that help them to blend in with their surroundings so that the enemies could not could not spot them easily for instance if we take a tiger so a tiger has black and white uh, means uh, means uh, stripes on its body through which it can bend it with the grass and a chameleon a chameleon can also Camouflage with its surroundings means blend it with the, its surroundings. Mm, now let's come to a topic: eating habits. The and different animals have different eating habits. Like a giraffe eats grass. A giraffe eats grass, and a lion eats a flesh. Lion eats the flesh of other animals. So. Sometimes the animals that that eat the kind of their food, their legs, tongues, and their tongues, legs, and even their body depends on the food 
like with uh, uh, means on which they eat so for instance if we take a tiger so tiger has sharp nails which which help it to catch the enemy means or if he has to hunt and eat so this is helping it now let's come to three types of let's come to three types of animals uh, sorry i was confused here uh, first we will define herbivores the animals that eat only plants and fruit means only plants are called herbivores e.g. a cow or a goat or a giraffe or a carnivores the animals that only eat the flesh of other animals are called carnivores uh, instance tiger lion or wolf so now let's come to birds of prey birds that hunt their prey while flying are called birds of prey so eagle kite and vulture are birds of prey they they have a very good eyesight which helps them to spot enemy from uh, from uh, means large range means from distance from great distance now let's come to rodents rodents are uh, small animals like squirrels rats hamsters etc etc they eat food like nuts etc butterflies suck nectar from flowers you know this but butterflies use their tube like needle means tube and needle like pipe named proboscis write it pro p r o b o c i s p r o b o s c i sorry uh, it was a mistake by me means i have done a mistake now let's come to breathing in animals you know that all animals and human needs oxygen to survive the terrestrial animals breathe in oxygen from the air while like fish uh, while fish means animals like fish breathe through gills in water let's come to breathing organs different animals have different ways of taking oxygen in their body birds reptiles and mammals including humans breathe through lungs air enters their body through the nostrils and reaches the lungs through a tube called windpipe the lungs absorb the oxygen from the air and releases carbon dioxide or co2 now let's come to now let's come to breathing in insects insects do not have lungs they instead they have a network of tubes called trachea trachea uh, noted down trachea spelling of trachea is t r a c h e a trachea air enters the trachea through small holes on their body called spiracles uh, the spelling of spiracles you you can also write this s p i r a c l e s spiracles air passes through the trachea and reaches the tissues of the animal means of the insects now let's come to aquatic animals aquatic animals like fish breathe through gills and if we talk about amphibians uh, like uh, frog so frog can survive in water as well as on land so this is an amphibian amphibians can uh, while a frog is in water it breathes through its skin means the skins absorb the oxygen present in the water now let's come to movement in animals animals move from one place to another and in to, to search of food and water to protect themselves from enemies and to find a shelter for them so this movement of the animals is known as locomotion this word is made from locomotive you can write this also 
L O C O M O T I O N locomotion. Now let's come to terrestrial animals. What are terrestrial animals? Terrestrial and terrestrial animals are the animals who live on land. For instance, kangaroo. I'm also going to tell you that a kangaroo jumps on its hind limbs. Hind limbs means the back legs. The back legs of the kangaroos are very strong. Now let's come to aquatic animals. Uh, aquatic means the animals that live in water are called aquatic animals. E.g. fish or sorry, e.g. fish or octopus. Now let's come to aerial animals. Most birds are aerial animals. They have special features that help them to fly. They have four limbs modified into wings. In four limbs means the front hand, means the front legs are modified into the wings which help them to fly. They have hollow bones that make the body light. Hollow means light. They have strong chest muscles the wings are attached to the breast bone with the uh, breast bone with the chest muscles these muscles provide strength and help the bird to move its wings in the air some birds have large heavy body and poorly developed wings so these uh, so they are not able to fly these animals are known as flightless birds. Means these birds are known as flightless birds. By mistake I told their animals but now I am saying birds. Ostrich, the cassowary, emu and penguins are some flightless birds. Now let's come to amphibians animals. Means amphibians. Amphibians are the animals that can live both on land and in water. Uh, I have given you an instance of a frog and a salamander. Now our last one is arboreal animals. Animals that spend most of their time on trees or they live on trees are known as arboreal animals. E.g. monkeys etc. So now uh, um, we are coming to our large, last chapter, I means last topic named migration. Some animals travel long distances to scale uh, in, in large numbers in search of food, shelter, breeding grounds. This mass movements of uh, boats or animals are known as is known as migration. The Siberian crane flies thousands of kilometers to reach India in order to escape the extreme uh, to escape the extreme cold winter cold winter. When the winter ends, they go back to they go back to their original homes because uh, means because any of a living organism cannot live means at the other place he has to go to its homes. So this is a migration. Let us know about some migratory animals. The Arctic the Arctic turd travels the Arctic to Antarctic in winter means Arctic Circle to Antarctic Circle. In winter uh, soon I'll make a video of it also means in means in degrees of SST so I'll make it. now let's come to fishes so no it covers uh, the Siberia the Arctic 10 turn it covers a distance of about 60,000 to 80,000 kilometers during the round trip fishes also swim long distances to reach rivers and ocean or oceans to lay eggs where they lay eggs they die there and the young ones swim back to their original homes uh, salmon means the salmon fish and eel are examples of that fish of the fishes that migrate so this was the video namaste friends bye bye